Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. So after my first Cassette Beasts tips and tricks video, I did mention that I'd be interested in making a second part to it if community feedback was sort of inclined for it. And it turns out a lot of people did want a second one. So here we are. Now in today's video, we're not gonna be simply looking at beginner tips and tricks. You can check out my other video for that, but instead we're mostly gonna be covering some intermediate, advanced and just post game stuff in general. So do keep that in mind. There will be some tips on this list that involve areas of the game that you might not wanna see if you or someone that wants to avoid spoilers, so be warned. Anyways, all that being said, I've got a few that I think are pretty interesting, so definitely make sure to sit back, relax, and let's dive in. Okay, so each of these tips are gonna require a lot less explaining than in our previous video, since you should already sort of know how the game works at this point, but just expect this to be a little more flowy than the last video and that I'm not going to separate them into rigid segments. We're just gonna kind of go one by one. So first up, a pretty simple tip that I think is very underutilized is the fact that you can actually adjust your level options to your liking in the game settings. And while this is cool, since you can make the game easier or harder, I think the greatest usefulness comes in the form of when you're grinding in the post game for either XP or fused material. Turning both of these bars all the way down can make battles go much quicker and the fused materials you receive will not be impacted by the level or smartness of the AI. Obviously, if you want to get more XP, scaling down enemies might not be the best option, but you can scale them up and then make their AI really stupid, which could help as well. Speaking of the post game, don't think that once the credits roll, the story's over. Of course, you're gonna have all the completionist stuff like finishing the B-Series and any cleanup, there are also post-game bosses scattered throughout the map in terms of archangels you might not have fought, a rematch with a certain archangel, and even, I guess you could say, a mega boss. There are also the monsters that are sort of like legendaries in the game that you can re-encounter unlimitedly in the post-game, so that is something to take into consideration as well. Don't feel like if you missed Glaistain, for example, you'll never get another one. This is really good for hunting bootlegs and whatnot. Speaking of bootlegs, there is also a late game item that will give you an even higher chance of encountering them. Essentially, after you've defeated all the captain and Ian, you'll have full access to the fused material shop, which comes with it. Some interesting items such as the game's equivalent to Master Ball, but more importantly, this sacrificial candle that'll allow you to sacrifice any cassette and vastly increase the chance of finding either a cassette of the same type as that one or the same species from a rogue fusion battle. I'm going to be putting together a shiny hunting guide that goes over the different ways you can go about this. The candle seems to be pretty damn good, so you should keep your eye on it. Again, speaking of bootlegs, and I already put out a video discussing this, but if you get yourself an astral traffic crab, and I do recommend the candle method for that, you will actually be able to evolve it and receive magic crab, the NPC character in the game that's not obtainable, as a playable monster. I think this is yet another awesome way that the cassette beast devs really pay attention to detail, and this is something the vast majority of people would never find, but it's cool that you get rewarded handsomely. Now, final point about bootlegs, and this is another video I've already done, but if you can make your way to the west side of town, whether it be through swimming over there, breaking through the boulder to the north, or gliding, or whatever, if you head into this house, you will actually be able to receive a random bootleg for free. You'll want to do this really early on if you can, just so you have a bootleg to sort of mess around with. Remember, bootlegs get better moves and interesting typings. Another interesting thing that you should probably know is that not every cassette will just immediately have all of its evolutions available just by simply getting them to five stars. Some cassettes will require the monsters to know a certain move, others will require a certain time of day, etc. And I do have a guide coming out later today that will explore all of these methods, so stay tuned for that. Next tip is something that I really like about the game, that being the fact that you actually do get rewarded with fused materials and a ton of other goodies for your various milestones when it comes to database completion. Inside the guild hall, there's an NPC on the upper floor that will give you these rewards for every 10 monsters you catch after you've completed his first few quests, which will require you to find specific monsters. After you fully complete the B-Series, he'll actually start giving you side quests, asking you to five-star various monsters. So make sure you keep a slot or two aside just to level stuff up as you're playing so this becomes easier for you. Okay, our eighth tip isn't really something you're gonna be able to take advantage of as of the time this video is going live. However, do note that the developers have it set up in such a way that they actually can do distribution events via the utilization of a code, which can be done in any of the game's mailboxes. They did one during the demo and more recently did one for launch day, which would give you a metal bootleg traffic crab, but that's already passed. 
the sort of tip here is to sort of follow the Byton Studio Twitter page linked below to stay up to date on the various distributions or just follow my channel and keep an eye out for our Monster Tamer news segment. I have a feeling that Astral Traffic Crab might eventually make its way here in the future since it does lead to a special evolution. So I definitely think it's notable and there are a lot of possibilities with these types of distributions. Okay, so earlier we talked about how you can adjust the level scaling and intelligence of the AI. However, what you may or may not know is that when you beat the game, you will actually unlock a plethora of custom options allowing you to pretty much do anything you could ever want. You can have a Nuzlocke, a randomizer, etc. And I just think this is really cool that a lot of monster taming games started doing this and it wasn't even that heavily advertised. You might not even know Cassettes has this. Now finally for the last uh, tip slash trick for this video is Wonderful 7. Just the move. This is a move which I personally use a lot in our Let's Play. It's super powerful and I highly recommend you either use a monster that gets a move naturally or peel the sticker off another monster and apply it to the one that you want because this move is seriously kind of broken. Basically, it does high base power damage with a random debuff that can occur. And on top of that, it only takes up four AP. So if you fuse, you can just cheese higher level bosses. Eventually, when the later episodes of the Let's Play come out, you'll really see exactly what I mean by that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Cassettes has so much going on that I'm not even surprised we ended up with 20 tips and tricks total, and I hope that at least some of them were useful to you. That being said, if you do want to stay up to date on all things monster taming and any future Cassettes updates, definitely subscribe to my channel for daily content. You can check out my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon linked below. And I just wanted to say special thanks to my patrons, especially Jim Hamilton, Drow Ghost, Dark Persona, Candy Moranzi, and Exodus. And we'll see you next time. Peace.